Hey, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, I'm Luke Martinison. I'm the CEO and founder of Mo Agency. We're an elite HubSpot partner. We consult around the world, building CRM systems for sales, marketing, and service teams. We also do digital marketing and generate business for our clients. Today, I'm gonna to do a 10 minute run through of Sales Hub from HubSpot. This will apply to starter, professional, and enterprise portals, and I will explain if a feature I'm showing you is not starter and it is professional and enterprise. So let's jump into it. Hopefully I can do it in 10 minutes. Here is a dashboard, very, very normal dashboard that I show most of our clients. What we can see here is my quota. Is that for the month? I haven't closed anything. These are deals that I have in these stages. I can see the deals that I've got on it. I can see who's associated. I can see the amount. I'm not gonna run too much into these dashboards because it's not really populated. This is a demo we actually built for a potential customer of ours. They're a corporate travel agency. So you see there's a bit of a travel twist on this. But let's go into how the CRM actually works. Obviously, when you come in here, you look at the dashboard to see where you're at, but you need to understand how it works and comes together to understand how the data gets in here. So let's pop in. We have objects and those objects are associated. When it comes to sales, contacts, companies, and deals are your most important objects. Let's go look at the company object. We've got some companies in here. We can see that some of them are customers, some of them are leads. They also have life cycle stages like this, opportunity. So let's say Rand Merchant Bank is an opportunity. We can see the industry, we can see their contract. So this is a customer and they've got a contract. We can have a look at that document. We can see who the company owner is. We can see when the contract start date is. We can see we've got data issues here. These guys are a customer and we don't have a contract start date. This is a problem. We can see who the account manager is. We can see when the last activity date was. This would have been a meeting, an email, and we can see the segmentation, high priority, low priority, Tier one, tier two, these are big organizations, so they're tier two, I mean tier one, my apologies. If I go into Anglo-American, I can see how a company record looks. Down the left-hand side, we've got properties. Down the middle, we've got activities and overview. On the right-hand side, we've got associations. So Mpo is the CEO at Anglo-American. He's associated to this company record. There's no deals associated, all right? We can have a look at all the properties which are fully editable. We've broken this up into sections about this company, account overview, and contract status. We'll notice here the contract status has a start and end date. We've also got a fee which is empty. This would make sense because it's not a customer. It wouldn't make sense to have the contract start and end date because they're an opportunity. So we would expect this to be in the past. We can also, so what we're showing here is just inconsistency of data. And this is what we want to see. This is the sort of thing that you can't get when you are running things in a Excel spreadsheet. We can also bring little highlights out here. We can say there's the contract file, the expiry date, when the contact was created, the life cycle stage, and the last activity. There's a new element in, in, in HubSpot, which is an AI element. It's not currently running on this portal. I'll show that in another video. Let's go have a look at the contact. Mpo. Again, the same view. Properties down the left-hand side. All the activities in the overview in the middle. The associations on the right. Again, these are somewhat different. These are properties for a contact. We can see his communication preferences and we can see if he's been on the website. He hasn't. We can also see that he's a lead and he is a new business lead. We're attempting to contact him. The next stages would be connected. The next would be qualified. If we click qualified, it'll create a deal. He then becomes an opportunity or we could disqualify him. On the activities, we can see that we've had a meeting with Mpo. Now this is interesting because this is integrated into our Outlook, and I'll show you how that works in a second. We've sent an email to Mpo. This is a trial portal, so nothing's actually sending. 
and we can see the history of what went on with Nepal. So let's have a look at how these elements in the activity, the email and the meeting get in here. Let's go to settings quickly. And this is the joy of a system like HubSpot. It is automated, right? So if I go into general and I go into email, I can see that I've hooked up my email account. If I go in here and I decide I'm going to send something to Mpo, okay, it picks up that Mpo is part of HubSpot and it pulls his record. Okay, I can open it up over here. I can also say track this. I can log it to the contact and the companies. Okay, I can also set a template. So remember we're outreaching to him because he's a prospect. And look at it, it's mostly completed the email for me. I can decide now that I want to send that. Okay, it's going to send the email and if I go back to Mpo, which I'll do in a second, it'll show it to you. The other thing that is in, included over here is a calendar and we can see that that's also linked. If we want to look at it in Gmail, we can see that it's much the same. This is a different account, so if I just go a random email address, I can do the same thing. It just looks somewhat different in Google, but much the same thing. It works equally well in both. Let's go back to Mpo. And what we should be able to see is the email that I just sent. If Mpo opens this, it'll tell me that it opened it. I can then say, okay, cool. I would like to create a task to follow up because he didn't reply. I'm gonna say on Wednesday, uh, uh, didn't, uh, didn't uh, reply to email, uh, follow up, whoops. We now have a task set. When that task is late, it will go red. So we start seeing how we actively create elements in the CRM. Last thing is we're gonna create a deal. So let's create a deal in this pipeline. I'm gonna say this is low priority and I'm it's added to Mpaw for Anglo-American. I can customize that form, by the way. We now have a deal associated, okay? Now we're looking at a deal and we've got contacts and companies associated. What we can also do is we can go across to deals and we can see this deal over here. We can move it across, okay? And I've skipped a stage. This is a rule that I set up. Would you like to continue? I can go, yes, I shouldn't necessarily be doing that, but I'm an admin, so I can. And I've set a rule in over here. When we move to contract sent, we have to have an amount in there. So every deal stage, we add a conditional logic. So a salesperson can't move this to a point where it's gonna close without completing all the properties required. If I close it, Deal is closed and it goes onto my reporting. Okay, this was a 100,000 Rand deal. So what we can now go do is go back to our report and this will start to update. Okay, it's not updated just yet, but it will update in a little while and the stage will actually change to closed. Equally, if I go over to goals, I've set a goal for myself okay, that I have to do 600,000 Rand and I have now closed 200,000 Rand. This is a nice easy way of tracking progress on goals. Reps can do it themselves and this is the way we track targets in HubSpot. One last little thing and I know I'm over time, clearly it is not possible to do this in 10 minutes. My apologies, but what I want to just show is how we can edit pipelines and then we'll close this out. Notice we have two different pipelines. One is a renewal one, one is a new business one. They have slightly different stages in them. Look over here, prospecting for new, 
renewal requirement identified. Obviously, we're not prospecting them. We can add rules. Remember, we added some rules. There we are. Restrict deals from skipping stages, which I showed you. We can automate elements. So when a contract is sent, we send an internal email to the ops manager to get a contract. We can also add tags. So when there are exceptions in the pipeline, for example, things are overdue, and I do believe we have some of these in here. There we are, overdue. It should have closed, okay? These are little things that just enable your salespeople or yourself to keep on track of elements in the pipeline in your CRM and keep the data clean. Because one of the problems with spreadsheets, if you're in there, is the data is always a mess. It's easier to manage in a CRM. So that is HubSpot CRM and HubSpot sales in 10 minutes. Everything that I've showed you except the pipeline automation is available in Starter, in Professional, and in Enterprise. It is an unbelievable system. You can start at Starter, although I would recommend Professional, and you can move your way up as you prove ROI with the software. It really is fantastic software, and it fits squarely in between a lot of the vendors that are really expensive enterprise grade software like Salesforce, like Microsoft, which are very difficult to configure, um, generally need a admin to run. And then the entry level ones, which are like Pipedrive, Insightly, um, Monday.com. HubSpot really fits nicely in between these systems and as a CRM, if you're starting out and you've got a scaling company, there is no better option. Now, if you're interested in a custom demo, much like this demo we created for um, a corporate travel client, why don't you reach out to us? We'd love to do a demo for you. We'll customize it. We'll take you through the functionalities. We'll give you longer than five or 10 minutes, and um, we'll really show you what this software can do. We'll also talk about how if we were to set it up, we'd set it up for you and get you running within a week or two. Thank you for listening and see you soon.